What does it mean to raise a number to the i-th power? It may seem like an odd question to ask, like isn't it when you raise a number a to another number b, mean to multiply that number a b many times? And multiplying some number i many times doesn't really make any sense. This is something we come up against in math all the time. What we are going to do is generalize the definition for exponentiation. We did this when we defined what numbers to a negative power meant. We took the definition and generalized it. So instead of multiply a number by itself negative n many times, we instead divide one by that number n many times. So how can we generalize exponents from the real numbers to the complex numbers? Well, maybe we can look at this through other exponential properties and find something just a little bit simpler. We know that this number a to the power of i is the same as e to the power of ln of a to the i, since the e and the ln cancel out. But we know from our logarithm properties that this is equal to e to the power of i times ln of a. And we know from our exponential properties that this is equal to e to the power of i to the power of ln of a. The ln of a is easy to figure out, let's focus on the e to the power of i part. Now you might say that this is no simpler, but I would say that any exponential written in terms of e is always simpler. Just watch, you'll see. We all know that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and e to the 0 is equal to 1. This can be visualized by saying that e to the x is a displacement vector, and its derivative is a velocity vector attached to the end of that displacement vector. And since its derivative is equal to itself, the velocity vector is just the same as the displacement vector. Almost the same can be said for e to the power of a times x. The derivative of this is by the chain rule a times e to the power of a times x. So the velocity vector is just a times the displacement vector. This works for fractional values of a as well as negative, and you know, why not? Let's give complex values a try. The derivative of e to the power of i x is i times e to the power of i x, and so the velocity vector should be rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise, since anything multiplied by i is rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. And since this velocity vector is always pointing perpendicular to the displacement vector, then the magnitude of this displacement vector will stay a constant, 1. And anyone who's been in geometry class should recognize that this shape will trace out a circle. So this says that e to the power of i x is equal to the complex number that is x radians around this circle, or more formally, e to the i x is equal to cosine of x plus i times sine of x. This is actually Euler's identity and is actually why e to the power of i pi is equal to negative 1. Fascinating, right? So e to the i-th power is equal to the complex number that is 1 radian around the unit circle, which is approximately equal to 0.54 plus 0.841 times i. But anyway, how did we get off on that? Alright, we were looking for what a to the power of i is, not e to the i. Remember that a to the i is equal to e to the power of i to the power of ln of a, and so we just take this e to the i, 0.54 plus 0.841 i, and raise it to the power of ln of a, and we are done. Also, to take a to the 2 ith power, just square that last one, and to take a to the 1 plus ith power, this is actually really easy. Just multiply a to the first times a to the ith to get your answer. This comes straight out of our exponential properties. And so now with all of that, you can raise any number to any complex power. I hope you enjoyed this rediscovery of Euler's identity, and thanks for watching.